Hi everyone, back here with another video on post-processing. Um, I want to kind of keep going with this series of process along with me because I got some really good feedback on the last one. People seem to enjoy it. So here we go. Here's another video. Just going to look at like particular techniques for, for your images. Um, hopefully it helps you out a little bit. Um, so today we're going to look about uh, noise removal. And there's a, a variety of ways you could do this. We're going to look at three different um, techniques here today. Um, you know, you let's say you finished processing this image, but this one was shot on a fairly dark day, and unfortunately, we've got dreaded noise to deal with. So there's a few ways we can do that. One of the easiest ways, well, actually, I shouldn't say the easiest, but one of the ways we can do it is to select the background and then make a, ref a refined edge and then filter the noise. So let me show you how we could do that. My kind of favorite tool to select the background is the magic wand tool here. It works by selecting similar pixels nearby. So I'm just going to start clicking through the image here and we'll just kind of keep going like that. I'm not going to bother doing the whole thing here, probably just in the interest of saving time, but you get the idea. I'm selecting the background. If I needed to refine my selection, so let's just say, for example, that, oops, it selected part of the bird. Well, in that case, it selected so much of it, I would probably just undo that selection. But if you can imagine that, you know, it just selected a part of the bird here, one thing I could do would be just to zoom in there and then with the lasso tool holding down the alt key, I can subtract from my selection there just to get it back looking good. Okay, so we've, let's just pretend we've finished our selection here. One thing we always want to do is refine the edge. Um, this is going to be a pretty crazy one from whatever I was doing last time. Let's rein that in a bit. So we just want to feather the edge there a little bit. In this case, um, I think we'll just go with something like that. And then we can go ahead and run the filter for reducing the noise here. So filter, noise, reduce noise. Now, because we're just doing this on the background, we can do it pretty aggressively. So you can see here I've got it at a strength of nine. I'm reducing the color noise. I'm not preserving any details because we don't want to really preserve anything in the background and I definitely don't want to sharpen any details. Go ahead and do that. And there we go, we've got the noise reduced from our selected area. But sometimes it's not the easiest way to do it. I'm just going to back us up here to the beginning to make a selection. Sometimes it's really hard to make a selection um, on the background or on the area that you want. And it's actually easier to just take your layer here and create a new layer and then run our same noise filter that we just did on the whole top layer. There we go. But of course here now we've reduced the noise on the bird itself, which means we've lost all that detail. I didn't spend $12,000 on my 600 millimeter lens to have a soft looking image. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do a layer mask. So on our top layer here, we'll just click on the add a layer mask here and now what I can do is select the paintbrush tool, black, I'm at 100% opacity, which is good for right now, and I can just start cutting through back to that original image. It's kind of hard to see what exactly we're doing here, so one nice little technique is to hit the backslash arrow, and then we would be able to just paint, oops, paint, anything that's red is going back to the original. So you can see I could just paint along here and get our, our image looking back how it was before. You'd want to zoom in a bit closer and get a bit more precise around the edges here. But you may find that in some cases, doing the adjustment to the entire image and then layer masking and then painting might be easier. So that's our second technique that we want to look at. Third technique involves using a um, filter kit. So one of the filters that I like to use is, are the Nick filters and they have um, a filter called uh, Define which works pretty darn well on reducing noise. And there's a couple of ways we could do it. Just like we just did there, we could just let it automatically reduce the noise here and it will automatically create a separate layer. That's one nice thing about the Nick filters is it does it in a separate layer. 
And then again, if I wanted to layer mask it back out, I could just go ahead and create a layer mask, make my brush a little bit bigger here, and then start painting it out. The Nick filter might have done a bit of a better job about not applying the noise reduction just completely 100% to areas. It, you can see it's probably less blurred out in the areas. It's got an algorithm and it's trying to decide where the smooth layers are, but it still does it too aggressively. Um, so you're going to have to do some layer masking and painting, which is pretty easy to do considering that it's, it's done it already with some intelligence. Or let me just back ourselves up here, back to the original here. If I go back into define here, so it's doing its um, analysis here. And then if I want to do it more precise, I can click on reduce here and I can use these control points. So if I add a control point here and I'm going to just crank the noise reduction up on it, it's kind of hard to tell what's going on. So what I like to do is come over here and say the, to show the noise mask, then you can really see the area that's in white is the area that's being affected and the noise is being reduced. So we obviously have only done it on part of the image here. Easiest way to expand our noise reduction coverage, usually what I do is just make about 10 control points, duplicating them, and then I just start to drag those control points around the image until I've got a decently even coverage of noise removal. So you can see here, I'm just kind of working my way around the bird, and the branch. Sometimes they won't do a heck of a lot if, it's, if the software decides that the area is you know, a very unique area. It'll only apply it to that little bit. Anyway, so you get the idea. You could keep duplicating and trying to get your coverage. If you've decided that it got in somewhere you didn't want, you can add a negative control point and to take the noise reduction um, away from there. So for example, on the branch, if I thought it was getting too crazy, you could take a little bit of that away. And then once we were done, we'd say, okay. So now we've got, we've let the filter do its magic, but we've done it in a more controlled way. It's still doing it as a layer. So if you were worried that you maybe got a little bit of noise reduction over the face or the eye, you could always zoom in there. You've got your layer mask going. I'm painting in black to reveal back to the original. It's not doing a heck of a lot here because we've already, we've already um, let the filter do its work. But those are basically the main ways that I do noise reduction. So just to run over them again, Manually make a selection of the background, refine your edge, and run your noise reduction software through Photoshop. Second one, make a whole separate layer, reduce the noise on the whole image, paint it manually back out using a layer mask. Third way, using the Nick filter for define, you could do it to the whole image and paint it out, or you could manually make some control points and then just tweak if you need to with a little bit of final layer masking. So that's how I deal with noise. Hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.